Hi everybody, welcome to week seven. This week we're gonna cover section 12.3, so our learning objective, let's take a look here. I can use proportional relationships in similar triangles to solve mathematical and real world problems. So we're going to be using proportions, very similar to how we did in week six, but we're gonna be working with similar triangles this week. So our essential question is how can you use similar triangles then to solve problems? So make sure guys that you are writing this down. That is going to be our goal um, and what we're going to be answering in today's lesson. All right, so lesson 12.3, we're going to be exploring something called indirect measurement. So let's take a look at what that means first and then we'll take a look at the bottom box. All right, so indirect measurement, we can see here, finding heights, lengths, or distances that are too great to be measured directly. So what that means, if we were to directly measure something, we would use tools like rulers. So indirect measurement, on the other hand, involves using the properties of similar triangles to help measure those heights or distances, okay? So below, Okay, you've seen this before. This is our properties of similar figures. So today we're gonna to be working with triangles specifically. So just a reminder guys, that corresponding angles of similar figures, or in these cases, triangles, they are congruent. Corresponding sides of similar figures are proportional. So that's where we're gonna be using our proportions to help us actually find missing side lengths today. Okay, so again, you have this down here, if triangle ABC is similar to triangle XYZ, we know that these three pairs of angles are congruent. And then we have these side lengths, they are proportional. So again, that's what we're gonna be working with today. All right, let's take a look at some examples. Okay, so getting you guys ready for questions one, three, and four on your assessment this week. So given that these two triangles are similar, if you take a look here, we will read through the problem, but we have two triangles, right? We have X, Y, Z, and then we have A, B, C. You'll notice we have some heights in there. We do not have A, B, so that's actually gonna be what we're solving for. So let's read through this. So find the indicated dimension using the measurements shown in the figure and the properties of similar triangles. So in order to find the height of a palm tree, so again, that's gonna be our goal, you measure the tree's shadow, and at the same time of day, you measure the shadow cast by a meter stick that you hold at a right angle to the ground. So here is our meter stick. Again, here is our palm tree. That's gonna be our goal to find the height. So that's segment A, B. All right, find the height H of the tree. So I'm gonna go ahead and label H right here. Again, that's gonna be our goal. So we can use the fact that the side lengths and similar triangles are proportional to help us solve this problem. Okay, so we need to set up a proportion. So I'm gonna start with H, okay? H would correspond with what length in our other triangle? Okay, think about that. It would be our one, right? And then that's gonna be equal to the other ratio. So we have 7.2 over what side length does that correspond with in our smaller triangle, the 1.6, okay? So here is our proportion. Notice we have a variable. We talked about last week solving proportions. We use cross multiplication to help us solve, okay? So let's do that. Now notice you'll have that one in the denominator so technically, could we just divide 7.2 by 1.6 and get H? Yes. Just to bring that concept of cross multiplication back, let's go ahead and work through that. So remember, cross multiplying, diagonal products, we set them equal to each other. Okay, so we have H times 1.6. That would be 1.6 H. Drop that equal sign down. And then we have 1 times 7.2, which is 7.2. Okay, and then we divide our 1.6 off and we get our height. Okay, so H in this case is 4.5. Now notice because we are finding measurements here, we want to use those labels. So this is meters and that would represent the height of the palm tree. Okay, so that is just a basic example. We're going to try a couple more. So the next example, notice we have two other triangles. We are given that the triangles are similar. 
So we'll talk about how we know they're similar in a second. But again, we have similar triangles here. The goal is to find H. This is actually the height of the flagpole. All right, so Sid is 72 inches tall. To measure a flagpole, Sid stands near the flag. Sid's friend Miranda measures the lengths of Sid's shadow and the flagpole's shadow. So we have shadow here and shadow here. So those are the corresponding pieces. The goal is to find the height h of the flagpole. Again, we're gonna use a proportion here, okay, and help us to solve for that height. So the triangles are similar by the AA triangle similarity theorem. We've talked about that theorem before. If you have two triangles that have two angles that are congruent, they are similar. Okay, so you have that right angle. We also know that these angles are congruent. Okay, think about why, okay. That represents from the ground up to that height there. So we would have that those two angles are congruent. Okay, think about um, parallel lines as well. You can kind of get that pair that they are congruent. Okay, so let's go ahead and set up our proportion. I kind of have this worked through for us. Again, there are other ways to set up the proportion, but let's just set it up based on how this is written. So we have the flagpole's height. That is what we do not know. So I'm going to put H over its corresponding side, which is the person's height. So Sid's height is 72 inches, so 72 equals, and then the flagpole's shadow is 128 over the person's shadow. So Sid's shadow is 48. Okay, so here is one way. Again, take a look. We have H there. We have a ratio equal to a ratio, so we can cross multiply. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Diagonal products, set them equal. So we have H times 48, so that's 48H. Drop that equal sign down. And then we have 72 times 128, which is going to give us that right there. Again, you can use a calculator, that's fine, or you can write it out longhand, whatever works for you. Okay, let's go ahead and divide our 48 off. And that's going to give us the height of the flagpole. So we have 192. Again, let's bring our units in. This is inches. Okay. So again, that is one way to solve it. I'm going to just write out just a second way. Okay. For those of you that might be thinking, well, can't I just deal with the 72 right away? Okay. So if you have a proportion like this, okay, when that variable is in the numerator, Okay, instead of cross multiplying, you can actually undo the 72. So what that would look like is we have to bring the 72 over to the other side, right? So it's attached by, uh, sorry, division. So we would undo it by multiplying it. So what I would do is multiply my 72 over here. So you can do that all in one step if you'd like. Just make sure to divide this fraction first and then multiply by the 72. And you will get the same answer. Okay, so it's your choice. Just make sure that you are still showing your work, setting that up, um, and evaluating that solution. Good. All right, let's try another one. Okay, again, still getting you guys ready for these questions here. So two triangles, again, are similar. Okay, you can see that based on those angles there. So Liam is six feet tall to find the height of a tree. He measures his shadow. So here's the shadow right here. Okay, and then the tree shadow. So again, right here. The measurements of the two shadows are shown. Find the height H of the tree. So still finding that height. Again, indirect measurement using our similar triangles and their proportions. Okay, so let's go ahead and set it up. Again, we'll start with what we do not know. So I'm going to put H over its corresponding side. So Liam's height is 6 equals. I'm going to put our 28 then divided by 8. So shadow height over shadow height. Okay. All right. So again, we're going to cross multiply. If you want to use that shortcut, multiply the six over right away, that is absolutely fine. Go ahead. I'm just going to bring in our cross multiplying though, since that's what we worked on last week. So we have eight H and then six times 28 is 168. Okay. We're going to go ahead and divide that eight off and we will get the height of the tree, which is 21. Again, bring in the units, 21 feet tall. Good. 
Okay, so our last couple examples, we're still working with our similar triangles. You're just gonna see the setup in terms of the illustration uh, looks slightly different. Okay, so you can kind of see that right down here, but let's talk through this. So in real world situations, <clears throat> you may not be able to measure an object directly, again, because there's a physical barrier separating you from the object. So you can still use the similar triangles in these situations. <coughs> All right, so explain how to use the information in the figure to find the indicated distance. So this is getting you guys ready for question number two. So a hiker wants to find the distance D across a canyon. So here is D, okay? So that's gonna be our goal. She locates points as described. So one, she identifies a landmark at X. So that's right here, okay? She places marker Y, so right down here directly across the canyon from X. At Y, she turns 90 degrees away from X and walks 400 feet in a straight line. So you guys can see that right here. So there's that 90 degree angle and walks 400 feet, okay? She places a marker Z at this location. So that's that central piece. She continues walking another 600 feet. So again, you can see that right here. Okay. and places a marker W at this location. <clears throat> she turns 90 degrees away from the canyon and walks until the marker Z aligns with X. Okay, and then she places a marker V. So you can see that she continues down here and then marks that B. So you hopefully can see your two triangles here and we have them listed. So triangle V, W, Z is similar to X, Y, Z and that's by the angle angle theorem. So you can see the right angles. We also have a pair of vertical angles. So we get those two sets of angles that are congruent. Therefore, the two triangles are similar. Okay, so that means we can use our proportions to help us solve. Okay, so we are finding the distance right across the canyon D. So let's start with that. So D divided by what side would that correspond with in our second triangle? Well, that would be the 327. Okay, so let's go ahead and put that underneath. Equals. Okay, we have the 400 feet in our XYZ triangle. So 400, and that would correspond with our 600. Okay, so here's our proportion. Again, you choose how you want to solve it. I'm going to work through the cross multiplying. Those of you that are saying, can I reduce the 400 and the 600 first and then cross multiply? Yes, you are absolutely welcome to do that, okay? So however you wanna do it, I'm gonna go ahead and just be consistent with how we have been solving. So I'm gonna go ahead and cross multiply. So that means <clears throat> we have 600 D, drop your equal sign down and then 400 times 327, Okay, and then let's go ahead, divide our 600 off. Again, you will get the same answer if you work through it a different way as well, but that distance is 218 feet. Make sure that you bring that label. Good. All right, we're gonna try one more very similar to this. Okay, so our last example, again, question two here. To find the distance D across the gorge, a student identifies points as shown in the figure. So find D. So again, we're finding that distance across. Okay, note that these are similar. Same reason as before. We have our two right angles and we have that set of vertical angles. So two pairs of angles congruent. Therefore, the triangles are congruent. Okay, so let's set up what we have here. Starting with distance D. Okay, that side is corresponding with 35 in our second triangle. And then we have 24 over its corresponding side, so 42. Good. All right, however you wanna do this, guys, if you wanna multiply the 35 over and keep everything on that right-hand side, great. I'm gonna go ahead, cross multiply, then keeping it consistent. So we have 42, D equals, I'm gonna multiply 35 times 24, and go ahead, divide your 42. And we will get that distance across the gorge. Don't forget your label. We're working with meters. Good, all right, so that is it for our examples. A couple reminders then for this week.
Make sure to attend one of our live sessions for some practice. Work on those practice problems in your book work. And when you are ready, guys, you're welcome to complete the week seven summative. All right. If you have any questions, please make sure you are reaching out. I hope you guys have a wonderful week.